Boom! All right, what's up? Welcome to another wild rendition of Big Giant American Chef Cooks in a Tiny Filipino Kitchen. Tonight we're really going for a traditional Filipino approach. The last couple of recipes have been up, down, delicious, yummy, but then I've made a lot of mistakes and I've made mistakes when it comes to traditionalism. Cooking Pinoy is difficult, even in the Philippines, especially for me being the clueless American chef who really has no idea what I'm doing. But it's okay, because by the end of these next couple of months and all these recipes that I'm practicing, I'm gonna have it figured out here. Oh, time to open up my own Canadaria or something around here. Tonight's recipe really does hit home. It is, as they call it, the, the unofficial, official dish of the Philippines. We are making sinigang sabaw or sinigang baboy. Sinigang is a sour soup, traditionally made with pork. It can be made with chicken. It can also be made with shrimp or gambas. I've had it a couple different ways. Actually, I think I've had it just about every way. I think Alyssa and I have had it just about every way you can make it here in the Visayan Islands. Now, there's like 7,400 islands in the Philippines and each one of them has their own little version of it and their own distinct style or additives or ingredients that they use. We're gonna go as plain and as simple as I could be with this and I really hope you guys enjoy it. And maybe somebody here is gonna learn something on how to make it themselves or how to not do it the right or wrong way here. There's quite a few things that we needed to get done ahead of time. There's a lot of prep work to make sure that this is a quick, smooth and easy recipe. Otherwise, you guys will probably be here with me for like an hour or two. So I've gone ahead and done a couple of things and had my sous chef, Queen Alyssa, here do a few other things as well. Um, we've cooked off the rice. The world knows how to cook rice. If you don't know how to cook rice, comment below and maybe I'll show you guys how to cook proper rice in a different episode. But for right now, we've already done the rice and I've already gone ahead and browned the pork. The browning of the pork takes quite a while and then I've got to caramelize the onions. The island's running pretty skinny on onions right now as well, so that's kind of tricky. These are literally the size of the onions that I can get right now. They pack a lot of potent flavor, but they don't really give you that volume feel when you're adding them to it. You really want to see your pieces of onion in synagogue, and I don't really have them right now. And we honestly can't afford the big white sweet onions uh, because they're literally like $10 a kilo right now. And that's way over our budget as minimalists living here on a very low income in the Philippines. Right now, first things first, we need to peel and chop these onions. I need to get them caramelizing in that pork fat and oil over there. If this is your first time to the channel, we run a very small minimalistic kitchen and we only keep a very few items when we travel and when we cook. So right now I don't have spare pots, spare pans, strainers, rice cookers, ladles, spoons. I don't have any of those basic utensils and equipment to actually cook a full blown meal, nor do I have a large soup pot. I just have this tiny little pot that is currently full of rice. So what I have to do right now is I gotta get these onions caramelizing in there and I gotta get this rice out of here so that I can start making our soup in here. Welcome again to the other angle of our tiny little studio. Either we stand that way or we stand this way. But in order to give you the cut angle, Alyssa's gotta hop on my left side here. So we don't really have a lot of lighting. We just have this one small can light here in our tiny little kitchen. So I use my vlogging light over here that really really helps and then of course the light on the camera these are our tiny onions we're going to chop them up real quick so we can get this rolling i need to focus and look down because all i see is bright lights in my face right now <laughs> so yeah we're just kind of coming in here cutting these onions real quick cutting the top cutting the bottom off get a quick peel on them and boom we're done all right so after a quick peel it's time for a quick chop this won't take me but 10 seconds here just gonna line them all up come through and just hit them with a bop 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 as we say bop 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 chop 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 when they're this small you don't need much all right so we got to get the rice out of here real quick so that i can start working with it while the pan's heating up for me to caramelize the onions we're going to pull the rice out real quick then we're caramelizing the onions then we're going to start on our actual soup pot and broth See if I can do this the smart way here and just get the whole thing out. Hey, look at that. And a little bit of ducks on the bottom. Okay, I am gonna go ahead and just keep this little bit of rice in here because this soup becomes kind of a thick soup anyway. So this little bit of rice granules that are in here, fine with me. We're gonna come over and we're gonna grab some fresh water from the drinking fountain here. All right, 
that's probably enough right there. The reason I'm keeping this skimpy and small again, the same thing as I learned last time I cooked soup around here, uh, very tiny pot, we're about to add a lot of ingredients. So you really only need about a quarter, maybe a third of the actual water in there for your broth. Uh, once you add everything else, then you can figure out how to finish off your levels in your soup. Don't do the rookie move and fill it up and then add ingredients. Water set aside, that's ready. Rice is ready, pork bones have browned. If you're wondering what I've got this chicken here for, I'm actually defrosting this chicken so that I can break it down a little bit and start on a marinade because I wanna do a very, very special and also official unofficial Filipino dish tomorrow, chicken adobo. I know I'm ready for that meal actually. Um, okay, so the pan's hot, ready for the onions. Let's get them dropped real quick. Hopefully we get that signature sound, my favorite sound on earth. Yes. Now remember, I left this with all the browning fats and everything from the pork. So we're just gonna push that all off a little bit here. Some of the fats and sugars from browning the pork. And boom, we're just gonna caramelize those onions down a little bit with that. And then that'll go right into the broth. All right, so about two minutes on the onions. That's all we need, they're nice and brown. And then we're gonna slide them right into our broth. Now there is a lot of other flavors and ingredients going in this broth, but I've been told that it's a step-by-step -step process. So I'm gonna respect the process and add them one at a time accordingly like I'm supposed to traditionally. Our synagogue base is down in the pot. Now we're gonna go ahead and carefully without splashing Add our browned pork bones, meat, and marrow. So you see all the fats, the oils, and everything else that's all kind of blending already into this. Um, we're just gonna let that roll. We're gonna cover it and let it roll. We're gonna start prepping the rest of the ingredients over here. And then we'll be working with a few other little spices and ingredients that I have back here. I was told by a little birdie that for that extra, extra flavor, to maybe even add a little beef broth. And now I don't have beef broth, but what they definitely have here in the Philippines are these uh, Nor's tiny little bouillon cubes, which you can get basically at any of the Sari Sari's markets or larger stores here in town. Uh, I use beef bouillon for several different things. So what I'm gonna do is just take a tiny little bit of this, take my scraper, Slide that off. I think that's enough for tonight's soup. I'll set the rest of this off over here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add that right in the middle there. Bloop. And let that come up with a little bit more of that beef flavor that I'm personally looking for. I need a, I like the salty stuff. Now this is a sour soup, but I do still want my savory with the sour. Time for veggie prep here. Luckily, there's not that many things that actually go into this mix. Um, there is what I've been told here in the Visayas that some white radish or daikon radish goes in there. And then I've got some bajiao beans, these green beans or snap beans here. I've got two little sweet chili peppers that are more like a serrano or a, um, a sweet pepper here. We've got some garlic, of course, and we've got a tomato. At the very end, I'm gonna add uh, a little bit of green onion and some cabbage as well. That should be just about it. The only other key ingredients in this are going to be right here. And, and that's gonna be my choice on whether or not I wanna go with either some magic sarap, sarap all in one. It's pretty awesome. Basically, it's got fresh brawang or garlic, paminta, which is uh, black pepper, fresh sibuyas or red onion, uh, real chicken bone broth, and asin or salt. Salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and some chicken bone broth all mixed into one little magical pack here. This is a very, very popular thing here in the islands. So if I really wanna bring that flavor profile, that umami kick to it, this is what I do it with. On the other side of the spice world here, this is actually the Nor Gabi or the Sinigang mix. This is actually a complete mix of spices, herbs, flavors, and sour vegetables that I would be using in this traditionally. Says that it makes up to a liter plus uh, over seven portions. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just add about half this pack in there. And I'm gonna wait 
until this is actually rolling in a boil before I add this. The other reason I wanna add this is because there's one ingredient I wasn't able to source today. I was very busy. I've had a humbling couple of days around here. I was not able to source fresh tamarind or underripe sour tamarind. So this comes with a really powerful kick of tamarind and sour flavor. So I really don't need the tamarind tonight. I have it right here. See, it's right there on the pouch. One of the first big hacks I am gonna do though as a chef, especially because I'm in Asia, is you can get a little bit of MSG just about anywhere or umami seasoning or monosodium glutamate. I want this pork to really render off. I want the fat and the marrow to render off and I want all the savories and oils to come together and stay in this dish. So I'm gonna add a little bit of umami to this. Just a little bit here. Boom. That's really gonna help all these flavors accentuate and just become this really robust sour soup. First things first, tomatoes. Now, I will tell you, tomatoes in the Philippines are not always the best, and that's probably why they go in sour soups traditionally, because tomatoes do not grow here. I have not found a place where they grow them yet. If they do, please correct me and tell me. I'd love to visit a tomato farm in the Philippines. We only really get one type of tomato. There's like 500 tomatoes on earth. We only get one species here, and it's these small, like, Roma underripe tomatoes. Traditionally, they are bright green when you get them in here, and they are pretty sour for a tomato fruit. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and keep this as large as possible for right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this pit core out of here. So once I pick out the little stem core there, I'm gonna go ahead and slice this bad boy up. I only need to put it into a couple of larger slices, which should not be that hard. Just enough right there. But this is one of the softer ingredients that you add later in the dish. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that off into our little ingredients mise en place bowl here and let it ride. Next things up is our daikon radish or our white radish. These things are ripe, they are soft, they have already sat on the shelves for quite some time around here. This one is right at the end of its life. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a quick shave down, which is even difficult because of how soft it is. As a career Japanese-influenced chef for years, I worked with daikon radish. I have probably shaved, spun, shredded, and served about, probably about 10,000 pounds of these, considering as a sushi chef, we went through a 50 pound case a day of daikon radish. So I've got some experience with the white radish here. Um, we're gonna only use about this much for right now. Set that off. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and split this bad boy right down the middle. And again, I'm gonna leave it large chunks every recipe i've seen for sinigang everything's kind of large and bulky so we're just gonna rock it like that nice large chunks we have to clean as we go in this kitchen because as tiny as it is i don't have room to set aside a mess and work around it for a while all right next thing on the menu here garlic going in with a little bit of garlic here just gonna give it a fresh smash with the big knife and then bring in my beautiful chef's knife here and just give it a little one two three work over Boom, that is plenty right there. And we'll go ahead and add that to the sour soup mix. One of the other few ingredients around here is okra. In some regions, I've seen that okra is supposed to go into it, and in other regions, I've seen that it hasn't. And I don't really enjoy okra in soup, so I'm gonna keep the authenticity of the recipe and add it to it, but only add a little bit right now. And I'm not making a big batch, so make sure that's in there. Of course, some people are gonna add a lot more. Now we'll come in here with these peppers. Give these guys a real quick chop through. Boom. And into the mix. Honestly, last on our agenda for this delicious, quick and easy meal that takes a lot of prep, but is technically quick and easy, is uh, we're just gonna get these uh, bajiao beans here. And we're gonna get the ends off of them real quick with a quick snip. Boom. We're just gonna come in and cut these once and twice. And that's it. If you're wondering what that bottle of viscous yellow fluid is over here, we are experimenting with pineapple hooch, pineapple vinegar, pineapple wine, pineapple shine. 
call it whatever you want. We have achieved mother fermentation. We have uh, noticed the yeast begin to rise. We can smell it. We shake it and ventilate it every day. We keep it out of the sun at the right regulated temperature. We're gonna see what this turns into. If it's, uh, if it's totally tainted and I gotta throw it away, all it is is a little water and some pineapple trimmings from one of our delicious pineapples. If it turns into a really cool pineapple vinegar, that's awesome. And if it turns into pineapple hooch, it's even more awesome. That's the uh, total for our little ingredients for our tiny delicious soup here at home. It's gonna be delicious either way. We're gonna go ahead and set this alongside the soup. The soup's gonna roll for a little while. It should be boiling pretty hot right now. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the Gabi seasoning in there for the synagogue and we'll stir it up a little bit and then we're just gonna sit back and wait. I've already prepped up a few other things. We need the chicken to defrost so I can prep tomorrow's uh, chicken adobo. And I already went ahead and made a very, very delicious staple here in the Philippines, which I think all of you guys will be very proud of. Make sure you reduce, reuse, and recycle. Delicious chili garlic oil, which is full of really spicy chilies, fresh garlic locally, a little bit of banana ketchup, patisse fish oil, and some pig fat. And that's it. And she is raring and ready to go, and we're gonna be using that as a condiment later in my sour soup. That tastes amazing and smells wild. So the soup is rolling. It's time to add some of the synagogue flavors and seasonings, and it's also time to add some of the patisse or fish sauce or fish oil into this. So we've got the patina patisse, which is the fish sauce made directly in Manila, totally a staple here in the Philippines and absolutely crucial for your sour soup or your synagogue. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that off. And we're gonna add probably about a tablespoon or so of this because it is pretty potent. Boom, right into the soup. We're gonna close that up. We're gonna let that ride for a little bit. Now it's time to come over and grab our synagogue seasoning. Like I said, I wanna use about half of this. Very conservative around here. We've got a lot of half open packs and stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and add this right to the mix. All right, so I got about half of that in there. And now let's come in and give this a little bit of a stir real quick. It's kind of hard to stir when you have all these giant pork knuckles in there, but just give it a little bit of a toss there. And then maybe we'll just spin it around a few times. God, that smells good. So that's gonna roll off and boil for a while. I really don't have anything else to do. One of my favorite lines in the culinary world from the early 90s, especially being a millennial, you'll know this one. Ron Popeil style, set it and forget it. We're back. So we topped off the soup. We let it ride for about 35, maybe 40 minutes now. I'm gonna go ahead and uncover it. I'm gonna pull the bones, set them in our saute pan that we browned them in earlier. I'm gonna let them rest a little bit so that I can pull them, the meat, the fat, the tissue, the marrow, all of that off the bones. Then we'll set the bones aside. Then we'll add everything else back in with the all the sour soup ingredients and a little bit more of the synagogue gabi sour sarat mix. Then we're gonna let it roll again for about another 30 minutes and then it should be just about done. So step by step, we're getting there. Primitive kitchen, minimal supplies. This is what I have to work with all day long basically. These are my two special utensils that I use. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna do what we can. That looks amazing. The soup already smells out of this world. Okay, and last but not least, the last knuckle bone there. So you see where our water level is now. We are gonna add majority of this back, but we're not gonna add the bones back. So we're gonna bring this water, up, this water level up a little bit. We're gonna add the rest of the spice. We're gonna add the veggies, and then we're just gonna let it rock for a little while. We are not sponsored in any way by these guys, but we could be. Call us. A little bit more of the sour soup mix in here. Like I said, I'm not gonna add, I'm not gonna add the whole thing. Probably about two thirds of it because this makes a big batch. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add our veggies in there. Make sure that I get all of that garlic out of there. And then we will go ahead and close that up for right now. We're gonna let this uh, pork rest for a minute and cool off. And I need to grab some more water from the water tank and top off the soup. It's 
Almost time to eat. I'm freaking flipping starving, and I know the wife is too. Uh, so we've gone through and cleaned out the bones. I would say that's pretty clean. Got just about everything off of it that matters. I've gone ahead and chopped everything up here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just uh, scoop it all up little by little and add it right back into the mix. So just go ahead and add all of that deliciousness right back in. Come back over and scoop up another batch of it. Okay, and come get just the last of it here. Again, this is marrow, tendons, tissue, meat, everything that comes off the pork bones. The little white stuff, little squishy white stuff, that's the marrow. Boom. Let all of that fat drip off of there. Everything is just about complete. What I'm gonna go ahead and do, and I use my spoon for carving out the marrow, so there's tons of uh, pork fat and marrow on there. Mm -mm -mm. I'll let that melt right back into the mix. First things first, I need to get a sense of the flavor profile right this second, so, and see whether or not, perhaps I need a little bit of salt, maybe a little bit of pepper. I didn't add anything to this other than what you've seen so far on camera. No other seasonings, no other savories whatsoever. Just that little bit of Sinigang Gabi, spice that little bit of umami seasoning that's it i've let all the rest of the flavors come from the meat and the veggies themselves let's go ahead and get a final taste test on this so that we can figure out whether or not i need to add anything else to it <sighs> wow that's pretty flawless i'm I'm thoroughly impressed with myself right now that is a pretty damn flawless sour soup right there I honestly don't think I need to do anything else to it. I don't even think I need to add salt, which is very rare when I'm cooking. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of water to it, cover it, let it roll for about 30 more minutes, and dinner's ready. We've done a really amazing synagogue baboy, or sour soup pork, or pork sour soup, depending on how you say it or how you interpret it. So while we're sitting here tonight, prepping our chicken adobo for tomorrow. It's kind of ironic because this is our one year anniversary week to getting to the Philippines. We got here last year right at the end of August and we flew Philippine airline the whole way. Our first Philippine dish on Philippine air on the way to Manila from LAX was chicken adobo. And even more ironic and even more legendary minimalist style of us, we love Philippine Airlines cutlery. And uh, we use them and travel with them everywhere because we can legally take them on a plane. Uh, this is the, cut, the disposable cutlery that they give you on Philippine Airlines. It even says Philippine Airline engraved in each spoon, knife, and fork. We love them. They last. They hold on really well. They clean really well. And uh, you can tell how many times we've been flying Philippine Air because we have a nice little collection of them. One by one, they kind of break or they chip or they fall off. And that's fine because they were included in the airline ticket. All right. Grab our adobo, chicken adobo marinade, set it in the fridge. And we'll get that out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right, legends. Thank you so much for hanging out. It's our favorite time of the night. It's dinner time. Bon appetit. We're going to eat. Tonight it is time for Sinagagna Baboy. Sinagagna Baboy. I am so excited. Oops, sorry. I'm on the microphone. So excited. Sinagog Nababoy is definitely a Filipino staple dish, and I'm really honored to be able to cook this here in the Philippines and learn all about it. Hopefully I did it right. Hopefully I didn't offend anyone in my cooking, and hopefully it's absolutely delicious. We've already tasted the soup broth. Really, really tastes good. Now, Alyssa is going to be eating out of this bowl here with her soup. Uh, I actually don't have a bowl, <laughs> a soup bowl here. So I'm gonna be eating out of the saute pan that we browned all of the pork in. I put a couple little uh, pieces of rice balls from or dakots in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do these up like my Filipino sister-in-law over here recommended that I take my sweet garlic chili sauce here with my patis and everything else in it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set that on top of each one of these little bad boys right here for a flavor bomb sampler. I was told by two different Pinoy's that I trust extremely well that this is the way to go. So take a look at that one more time. Look at that. I think I did that right. Yeah, buddy. 
All right, so I've got my sample flavors there. I've got Alyssa's bowl here. If, you if you're new to the episode, we don't have ladles or spoons in this house. And if you're not new to the episode, then you know what's coming next. It's time for the good old coffee mug scooperoo here. So first let's go in here and try to find some veggies for hers. And uh, I think we're gonna drop one pork knuckle in here as well. Drop a pork knuckle in there, a couple of tomatoes. Let's get some veggies in there for her. Some green beans, some daikon. Oh wow, that just looks amazing. Okay, so we've got the basics in there. Now let's go ahead and get her the broth and the proteins, AKA the good stuff. Wow. That officially looks amazing. Smells amazing too. Oh no, green bean down. Okay. There you have it, folks. Synagogue. Na ba bye. Rami lami ka ayo. Salama ka ayo. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Bon appetit. It's time to eat. All right, so I am grabbing a little bit for myself. And I am going to go ahead and just drizzle some in this pan so that I can get a little flavor test here with some of my rice balls. Just a little bit for right now. I don't need much more. I'm going to get all the rest of it in a minute, but I was told I need to do it this way and give it a try. So, got my Ducats brick, a uh, ball of rice. I've got my flavor. Mm. Oh, wow. Pretty sure this is about as becoming Filipino as you can get around here right now. Wow. So I definitely added some patis, a bunch of patis to that chili garlic oil. Wow. Oh my God. It's so good. I have a new flavor. I have a new recipe. I'm happy. I'm doing the happy food dance. Now it's time for the wife to do the happy food dance. Thank you so much for watching. Salama kaayu. I love you guys. My inga bi'i. Have a wonderful night. Lami lami kaayu. Synagogue na sabao. Synagogue na baboy. Synagogue na baboy. I did it. I did it. Filipino sour pork soup. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Have a wonderful night. God bless. And I hope you're hungry, because I am.